Welcome everyone. This is a follow-up video on my first Raptor video, an advanced method for retrieval augmented generation. So if you did not watch it yet, first watch that one to learn about the basics of Raptor. I still gonna provide a short summary of the idea by example. Suppose we have a few document chunks that belong to one large handbook. Instead of just embedding the chunks and performing retrieval on them, we embed the chunks, run a dimension reduction on them and cluster the results via a clustering algorithm, for example a GMM. We then take all chunks belong to each cluster and let a large language model generate a summary for them. These summaries are then again embedded and clustered, repeating the process until we only have a final root document left. Raptor addresses the issue that normal rec only covers small parts of text, but the broader semantic depths of text often get lost. In the first video I showed you a script-like approach, now I want an approach that really works recursive and ends with a single root document. You can get the code as always in the description. Okay, I'm currently in VS Code and here on the left you can see multiple files and folders. These should look pretty familiar with you if you watched my first video about Raptor. If not, please watch that first because we build up on that knowledge in our dynamic Raptor script.py. So in our dynamic Raptor.py file, we first gonna import the necessary libraries. So we import from pandas because we store all of the results in a pandas data frame. We use umap to reduce the dimensions of our embedding vectors from 1536 to only two dimensions to be able to um, cluster them easier. And for the clustering, we use the Gaussian mixture class from scikit-learn. And for the summaries of our clusters, we're gonna use Langchain with a chat prompt template, the embedding model, the OpenAI class, and so on. I, sh I think most of you will be familiar with that if you watched my videos before. So the first step is to load the OpenAI API key. I store that in the .end file. The next step is to create our class, which is the text cluster summarizer class. It takes three arguments, the token limit. This is important because we cannot put more tokens into the model as the allowed context window. So for example, GPT-3.5 Provo has got a maximum amount of tokens of 60K. And if we exceed the limit, the API call will not work. So we always have to check for that. The second parameter is the data directory and this relates to this directory, which, which is also called data. And this contains three text files, data1, data2, and data3.txt. And this is the search pattern we look uh, for with our directory loader later in that class. I also added multiple print statements in our class so we can always see in which step we currently are because this algorithm takes some time. The next step is to set the token limit here as attribute with self.tokenLimit equals token limit. And then our loader, which is not in the constructor, is a directory loader where we pass the data directory. And we look for that pattern, which is also in the constructor. Then we create a text splitter. We could also do that dynamic by providing an environment variable or also putting that in a constructor. But I think for this use case, it's fine. We create very small chunks with a chunk size of 200 and a chunk overlap of 20. Then we also provide an embedding model and a chat model, which are both from OpenAI. So we use the normal OpenAI embeddings class and also the chat OpenAI class with, with the model GPT-3.5 Turbo because yeah, GPT-4 is pretty expensive, still pretty expensive. Okay, the next step is to load and split our raw documents. So we use our loader and call the load method on them. So this creates three documents, one for every file, and now we want to use a text splitter, pass the documents and return the chunks. So these will be far more chunks than original documents. Now we're gonna use a function called embed texts where we pass these chunks as a list of chunks and we loop over each of the texts and use the embed query method of our embedding model to create an embedding vector from each of our chunks. Now we've got multiple embeddings or a list of embeddings, but they've got a dimension size of 1536. This is far too much to create clusters, so we use the UMAP class and we reduce the number of dimensions to only two dimensions. We then have got a little helper function called num tokens for string, where we pass in a, a single string and this string will be a concatenated version of the chunks um, for each cluster. So if our cluster exceeds the token limit of our model, this will not work. And with this function, we're gonna check for that. 
The next two methods are for creating our cluster. So we've got this cluster embeddings function and also the get optimal clusters function. So get optimal clusters is called inside here. So we're first going to discuss this one. So what we're going to do here is we use the Gaussian mixture class. And what we're going to calculate is a score, a so-called big score. And this big score or Bayesian information criterion is a statistical measure used to evaluate and compare the performance of different model choices. So we use that to calculate the optimal number of clusters. So we first gonna calculate the optimal number of clusters, which is returned by this function. And then we're gonna use that to actually create our clusters. So very important to understand these two methods because these are key for Raptor. The next method is for formatting our cluster. So we will get a list or better said a pandas data frame. So we will check for the unique values of the calculated clusters and then concatenate the text for each cluster by that. So we get these three minus signs and then join the original text. And at the end, we get a large list of text, which is separated by these three minus signs. And we do that for each cluster. So now we've got a list of multiple texts, but what are we going to do now? We are gonna create a summary now. And for that, we are gonna use OpenAI. So we create a prompt with the instruction you are an assistant to create a detailed summary of the text input provided. Use a chat prompt template and create a chain with the language chain expression language where we pass the prompt to the model and that to an output parser. And we're gonna invoke that chain for each list of texts which we stored in the text where we, which we pass here. So this is the output and what we're gonna get here. And we pass that, iterate over the items and then invoke that every time. So we now get um, summaries for each cluster. So we've got a lot of logic in our code now, and now we want to create a last function which puts everything together. So this is the run function, and this does everything which we defined before. So our first step is that we load and split the documents, and then we extract the page content of each of the documents. As you can see here, this document looks like this. So um, this is a document from LangChain, which contains two attributes, metadata and page content, and page content is the original text. So now we store all of our texts in an initial variable and set our iteration value to one. We also store the original texts, which are the smallest chunks in uh, iteration and summaries attribute, which is an empty list, and we're gonna pass in that dictionary here. So we're gonna return all of the values, the initial chunks, the summaries, and of course the root summary. So we return everything from that function. And then we start with our algorithm. So we use a while true loop because we don't know how many iteration it takes. So we've got our first small chunks, then we cluster the chunks, and then we summarize the clusters. And then we cluster the summaries again, and again we summarize the clustered summaries. And we do that until we've got our final root summary. We've got two criteria to stop our algorithm, and the first one is based on the embeddings. So we need that n neighbors variable to be able to calculate the dimension reduction. And if that's smaller than two, that algorithm of UMAP does not work. So then we will stop calculating that. And the second one is if we only got a single cluster left, then of course we cannot cluster a single cluster. Otherwise, we will do the following. So we'll first embed the text, then we reduce the dimensions, cluster the dimensions, and put everything in a data frame. So we've got the summaries for each cluster, and we're gonna perform the format cluster text method, which will group the pandas data frame, and then concatenate each of the uh, summaries and also of the original texts. Yeah, and then we're gonna generate the summaries from our clustered text, store the summaries again, and then append this value to our alt summaries variable. And then we also append that alt summaries variable to our iteration summaries attribute. So we do it like this, we pass the iteration, so we can see if this was an initial iteration, in a second or in a third, and we pass in the summaries here. Then we increase the iteration variable by one. And then we're gonna return the texts, the iteration summaries, and also the final summary from that run method. And then we have to run it. So we instantiate the text cluster summarizer and set a token limit to 16K. So this is a little bit lower than the token limit of GPT 3.5 Turbo. And we set the data directory 
to data because this is where we stored our data. And this will now return our final input uh, output from the run method. And we store that in this variable. Okay, that's how we perform that. Now let's run it. We've got multiple print statements to see this in progress. So let's run Python dynamic raptor.py. So first we're going to load the data. This should be available in a few seconds. Here we can see running that summarizer and we are now in iteration one. We now embed the text. This will be the larger step because we've got most data in this iteration. We've got the smallest chunks, which all have to be embedded and then clustered. Okay, now the dimensions are reduced to two. The clusters are calculated and we can see we've got an optimal number of clusters of five. So we will receive five initial summaries of our initial data. And now we will cluster the summaries again. Okay, now we are in iteration two. We again are reducing the numbers. As you can see, this is much faster now. We got four optimal clusters from that, which is interesting. Now we are in iteration three and we can see that now we stop because we don't have enough data points for UMAP reduction. So this is our final solution. So we stopped in iteration three. So as you can see, this works, but currently has one big issue. Think a second about it. So maybe you find this issue yourself and I'm gonna tell you the issue is the token limit. So if you have got too many documents at the beginning at iteration zero or iteration one, then the algorithm will just fail because the context window will be too large for our model. So if we set this to 200, I'm gonna show you the error. So yeah, now you can clearly see the issue. We've got a value error token limit exceeded for cluster one and we've got far too many tokens. So we cannot create a summary because the tokens exceed the context length of our model. So that's bad. One of my viewers introduced a nice idea that we could create subclusters of one initial large cluster, but creating that dynamic and creating larger clusters again from that subclusters is really, really difficult. The authors of the Raptor paper recommend doing this stuff only with models with a very large context window. So in the future, this issue might become less of an issue. So let me know what you think about this approach in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.